Hi, I'm Serena Robinette, Education Specialist at Soundtrap. So today I'm going to talk about teaching musical form with Soundtrap. Um, I taught it with my students, uh, middle schoolers, and so I'm just going to go through my process and show how I taught it and provide some resources. So quickly, I'm going to give an introduction on how I taught musical form, uh, and then I'm going to show binary, ternary, and rondo. Those were all the basics that I taught my students. Uh, so just to start Soundtrap, uh, our goal is very similar to Spotify's. It's to make music creation and storytelling simple and collaborative for everyone. So I'm hopefully going to give you the tools to make sure your students can create um, and collaborate with their peers. Uh, so I usually start with musical form is the structure of a piece. Um, thinking about architecture, how you need to have a structure for a building. Music needs to have a structure so that it sounds good. Um, so I always start with binary form. I often like to share examples. So a good example is Superstition by Stevie Wonder, um, one that hopefully students know. Um, I also use like a sandwich model to teach. Um, so we have the A and the B section. And so when you're listening to music, you'll have the A section and it'll sound different than the B section. So thinking about a sandwich, the bread is different than the meat. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, this is an example in Soundtrap of binary form. So if you wanted to show students, um, you could show them this example. So this is an example of binary form in Soundtrap. And if you notice, the A section is different than the B section. It even has different loops. Um, and so what you would do is show this example to students. Um, you can press play. So it gives the example of rock and then the B section is going to be totally different. So giving them that drastic change really helps students um, get the idea of binary form. The A section has to be totally different from the B section. And then you'll give students an opportunity to go into Soundtrap, go through the loops and add their own. Um, so it's a very simple lesson to do. Um, typically with my students, it took about a day to introduce and have them play or have them create. Ternary is very similar to binary, except for the A section repeats at the end. So if we're thinking about the letters, it's A, B, A. If we're thinking about our little sandwich, it's the bread, the meat, and then the bread again. Now, this is a great opportunity to introduce copy and paste in the Soundtrap Studio. Um, so I'm going to share another example, a ternary example in Soundtrap, which we have a QR code here and I'm going to share on my screen. All right, so this is a ternary form. Again, I've color coded it so it's very easy for students, but we have the A section, the B section, and then the A section again. So really quickly, as you're teaching students, I always start with A and B. And then what you're going to do is teach students how to copy and paste um, their A section. So you highlight, you click and drag a box, and you're gonna use Command C or Control C, depending on the computer you're using. And then you're gonna put your playhead right after the B section, and then Command V or Control V. Make sure you're up here so that it's in the same space. It just helps students visualize it a little better. Um, and so then you can show students again, the A section. We have the B section. Um, and then the A section will be the exact same thing as the beginning. Um, a good example to teach students ternary form is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, because uh, it has the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, and then that's the A section and then the B section up above the world so high. And then you go back to the A section. Uh, I sometimes find it helpful to show students A, B and have them sing the A section that they already know um, is a great way to explain that. And now we're gonna go to Rondo form. Rondo form is a little more confusing, um, but it has the same practice of ternary where you, the A section repeats. Um, the only difference is that the A section repeats and then new sections are added. So again, thinking about the letters, we have A, B, A, C. So the B and C are gonna be different. A, D and A. Um, and then when I taught 
if I had the younger students, sixth and seventh grade, I'd have them do an abracadabra, abacada, um, and have them try and say it and make it a funny moment. Um, and then thinking about the sandwich, we have the bread, the meat, the bread, just like ternary, but then we have the cheese. And you can ask students, is the cheese gonna be the same as the meat? They'll say no. Um, go back to the sandwich and then a tomato. Is the tomato gonna sound like the cheese or the meat? No. Um, so, and then you always come back to the bread to kind of end it. Uh, so this is an example in Soundtrap. I'm gonna show you. And again, you can have students re-practice that copy paste um, in the Soundtrap studio so it's easier for them. And I'll show again how that works in the studio. As you can see here, this is the Rondo form and you notice the A section keeps coming back. Um, and I've again, color coded it to make it easier, but so you have the A section. B section is going to be different. You go back to the A section, then the C section is going to be different. And then the last one, D section, is also going to be different. And then end with the A section. Um, thinking about if students are having trouble trying to make it sound very different, you might want to go into our loops and look at the names. So we have the Anthem loops, the Atlantis loops. So maybe you might want to guide students and say, hey, maybe try um, a section with only Atlantis or maybe try one with only what's the next one. Um, let's see, originals maybe only brick. Um, so to give them that guidance if they need it, if they're needing help trying to change up their beats. Uh, if you need any support, I've created a lesson plan for you, um, which we can also share in the show notes. <laughs> um, and feel free, I've used it as um, a, a unit essentially. So this wouldn't all be done in a day. I would do one day um, each for each form. So binary on the first day, ternary than rondo. And again, it kind of scaffolds itself um, from easy to hard. And you can obviously change it. You can add your others. You can, um, I've seen some teachers do complex binary um, and try to change it up a little, um, or complex ternary. And that really gives students more um, options to create. So enjoy, and I hope to see some really awesome binary, ternary, and rondo form creations from your students.